Well, hi, I'm Sarah Goodwin. I'm a graduate student at UCSF, and today for iBio Magazine, we're talking to Dan Barry, who went from being an academic professor in bioengineering at Michigan to doing spacewalks and working with the International Space Station with NASA, and now he runs his own robotics company in Massachusetts. And so thank you for joining us. And sure. today we're talking from um, the NASA Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California. So you went on Survivor. I Indeed. was wondering what... The ultimate competition. Yeah. <laughs> what made you decide to go on Survivor? Well, I just liked the show. I thought it was a fun show, and I thought it would be a really interesting challenge because they have such a great um, scheme for changing who's valuable, right? So at the beginning, you know, it's kind of this teamwork thing, and, you know, the people that, that can... Um, when the competitions are valuable. And in the middle, um, you, you want to get rid of those people because it becomes individual competitions and you want to get rid of the people that are good at that sort of stuff. Uh, but, but in the first two phases, you still keep the social people. And then in the last phase, you want to get rid of all the social people because you ultimately want to be put up against somebody that everybody hates so that you'll win. <laughs> so you keep all the people that are really you know, irritating. So it's a very good dynamic to change what characteristics of an individual are, are beneficial at the moment in that game. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting, but mostly it just looked like it would be fun. And I was actually quite fortunate to get on a season and be divided into tribes that um, ended up with just really uh, very, I would say, cooperative and uh, fun people to be with. So I, I loved being on Survivor. I really had a good time. Even though I didn't last that long, I was kicked off like sixth. Um, when my best friend stabbed me in the back, but, <laughs> but it was really fun and I really enjoyed the experience. That sounds like quite the experiment. <laughs> it was, it was. And in fact, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a really good group dynamic going and were it not for, you know, a tenth of a second here or there, uh, you know, we would have dominated. <laughs> Did you so. use any of your science skills in uh, trying to, I know that they have different um, kind of I guess games or sure. Yeah, they play great little games. competitions. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't really use any science. I did use survival training because I built this kick-ass shelter. I mean, the best shelter that's ever been built on, on Survivor. You know, foot and a half off the ground, a nice waterproof uh, roof, and that sort of thing. Um, and I, I knew how to make fire, uh, which surprisingly people go on Survivor not knowing how to do. <laughs> um, but in the end, actually, it was a, a being unable to solve a puzzle, which, which uh, caused my demise. So I have to say. Uh, and the other thing is, of all the sort of uh, hardships that were there, and there were some. I mean, you don't eat for 12 days, that sort of thing. Um, I was surprised to find that the limiting consumable was dry wood. And that's because you need to have a fire because you need to boil the water in order to have enough water to drink. And I guess as a cautionary tale for, the, for those survivors uh, of the future, <laughs> uh, I thought I knew everything about dehydration. I, I mean, I'd been through two military survival camps where the major focus was don't get dehydrated. And so I was making sure, you know, I urinated, you know, twice a day and I was pinching my skin and checking. And so I thought I was about five pounds dehydrated because you could only drink as much as you could boil. Well, I got off that island and I had lost, in 17 days, I'd lost 33 pounds. Oh my gosh. Of which about uh, 17 or 18 was water. So I regained the water weight in three days, but I had no idea how severely dehydrated I was. And then I went back and looked at the films, and I'm looking at this puzzle I couldn't solve, and I'm like, I was completely confused on that thing because I was dehydrated. Yeah. So I had my rationalization as to why I couldn't solve the puzzle. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit more about the importance of cooperation and advancing knowledge and innovation? You know, everybody says, cooperation, forget that, competition's where it's at, right? So keep your cooperation, I'm going to go find the most competitive people and that's who I'm going to hire for my company. And the example I want to give you there um, is from uh, William Muir, who was a poultry scientist, who did an interesting experiment, which was that, you know, you, you want to get the most eggs out of your chicken. Right? So there's two approaches. One is um, you go to the, to the hen house and you pick the chickens that lay the most eggs, right? And then you breed those chickens and you do that for you know, subsequent generations and clearly you're gonna get a chicken that makes a lot of eggs, right? So he did that experiment. And um, after about four generations, uh, what he had 
was uh, the chickens grow in, in group, they, they nest them in groups of nine. So what he had after uh, four generations or so was a group of nine, which very quickly became a group of three, because those three murdered the other six. And they were three featherless chickens because they plucked the feathers out of each other. So he had picked the most homicidal, maniacal, competitive, insane chickens. And they were the ones that produced the most eggs because they would peck everybody else and take all the food and lay all the eggs, okay? So it was like, what, how can I put this? He, he, it was like he built the U.S. Senate or something. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Um, the competition isn't always the best solution. And then the alternative experiment, which he also did, was to take the clutches of nine chickens together, who together were laying the most eggs, and breed those, and that was successful. So, so there's many cases where cooperation completely trumps competition. And this sense of, you know, it's all about, you know, who gets the perfect score and, and who can step on the other person to succeed, that I think actually is a very weak strategy for uh, success, at least success is measured in the way that I think is important.